To be so simple, add a teaspoonful to boiling water. Bingo, 43 beans in every cup. Now, in order to achieve the perfect cup of coffee, one almost requires a doctorate, as Christy recently discovered. The back streets of Melbourne, a cult movement is growing amongst the city's best young baristas and their followers. scientific approach to extracting the purest flavour from the bean with some amazing results. What is coffee siphoning? Like tea, it's a tea type of coffee. It's a very pure flavour. What it really does is exposes the bean to nude. Um, so if there's any impurities in the coffee, yep. it will show up very clearly. My thing, Chris, it's very important for me, well, to live life this way in general, but to taste coffee mindfully. Yes. But I think mindfully has the ability to transport you to particular countries and particular experiences. The coffee story has been broken up into first wave, second wave yep. and third wave coffee. Yep. As third wavers, yep. we're about celebrating individual micro lots and individual farms. And so in the same way that perhaps if you're tasting a burgundy, you could taste the red in yep. Burgundy, yep. when you taste a, say, Panama, uh, Hacienda, Lais Miranda, or I believe in La Perla, so you climatic conditions yep. and that's what we're celebrating. Well, that was great. That was awesome. Yeah, beautiful coffee. Did, did you get the um, lemon citron and the little sort of armiac front note? The coffee bean is selected and treated with almost spiritual reverence, starting with I liked the first coffee the best, but the flavour wasn't as strong. Like I was expecting it to be quite full on and it wasn't. And I think you said it had it like a own fruit flavour, which now that you've said that, then I could taste that. But it was Subtle still. In the Kenyan African one, did you get the sort of dark chocolate yes, sort of with, number with, four? That yeah, was one of with, my with favorite. butter and cream? Yeah. So yeah. no wonder I liked it the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell me why we did that all this. Absolutely, it's really a quality control sort of process for the business. We're buying some of the best coffees in the world here, so yep. um, at this point they're in their, their st stable form as a raw product. Yep. We'll roast them lightly yep. um, to get that sort of true characters of the coffee. When you break the crust. Tell me about that. Coffee floats, so yep. some grains are going down in the cup and the majority are going up. So it's actually trapping the vapours of the coffee. Okay. So it's really inhaling all those aromas into the coffee. And what we did when we slurped the coffee is yeah. we made it all over the tongue. So we get that sour, bitter sensation all at once. Yep. And then part of that coffee then evaporates again into our nasal passage. Right up the back. Okay. And that sort of triggers all our nerve endings there to sort of decide how coffee's going to taste. Is roasting, which is also a highly skilled job. We subscribe to third wave roasting philosophy. Yeah. So we're a medium roaster as opposed to a medium to dark roaster. Okay. As the roast profile gets darker, you tend to lose subtleties of citruses and you get more caramelised and chocolate. Behind me you'll see a and it's like essentially it's just like a big washing machine, a drum goes round and round and round and round. And then what we listen for is what's called the first crack. Like well, yep. coffee pops as well. It's called okay. crack. Once it cracked the first time, then we listen out for the, for the second crack. And at the yep. second crack, we drop it. Dropping it means opening the hatch and letting the coffees all come out. Yep. And that's what we consider our perfect roast profile. Just under, or just about second crack. Okay. The reason why we do that, which is what we always do, is celebrating the complex flavours of the single state. We've got five roasters and they stand at the roaster for 10 hours a day and they listen and watch all day long with each roast. If you love your espresso, single estate coffee flavours can still be enjoyed with the latest technology. It's the first production machine in the world ever to be focused on single estate coffee. Okay. So you're able to experience the coffee brewing method of espresso, yep. but still taste the subtleties of single estates. And right. the reason why that with this machine, it's got two colours, but also the group heads have volumetrics altering ability, so you can go from one bar to Nine bar. That sounds all very boring, but essentially it's like riding an old school Ducati 996 as opposed to a Yamaha or something. Right. Much, much more complex flavour yep. without blonding out or burning the coffee. Okay. It's very exciting. That's the goal. The coffee story is far from over. The next wave is matching coffee and food. We're chanting single state micro lots, looking for subtleties in flavour. Yep. Match those flavours with food. So my guess is. This is going to be a citrusy, savoury coffee. Yep. So we're probably looking for this a mandarin juice, oregano, thyme. Yep. So I imagine this will be citrusy and savoury as well. Yeah. I'm definitely getting tomato soup, like tomato consomme. Oh, yeah. And lemon, that's citrusy. Strong lemon, strong citrus. Yep. So instead of wine and food, 
siphon coffee and absolutely amazing, worth a try. So let's try the food match, shall we? Mm. Wow. Oh my god, that's amazing. Mm. Well, I know I would never ever normally have coffee and food like that. But that goes beautifully.